Many people in life are looking for how do they make a life worth living. They're trying to put themselves together in a way that matches their soul. They're trying to look for life in a different way. They're trying to produce new opportunities after old ones have faded away, and sometimes they go through loss in life. They lose partners, they lose jobs, they lose employment, they lose business, they lose automobiles, they lose opportunities, they lose a lot of things. And maybe I've repeated myself, but the truth is, when we lose life, we don't need other people trying to interfere with our life going forward. When a person's trying to move forward in life, they're looking for, how do I put my soul in the right place with the right people where I'll be loved, honored, regarded, and find a sophisticated way to move forward. Sometimes we go back to folks we've known in the past and say, you know, we really worked well together in these moments of time, regardless of what the results really produced, because maybe at the time the compensation plan wasn't quite right for the people who were the potential clients, or the products weren't exactly right for those people, or they just couldn't afford to keep them going. The reality is, though, that new projects and new opportunities allow people to use old skills and produce new ones in order to make new life for their lives. You see, when we go through a transition in life, when we go through losses in life, we go through a grieving process, and that grieving process can take a short period of time or it can take a long period of time. There are some people out there, absolutely, who can just flip a switch like a light bulb and go, okay, I'm done with that. But in truth, they're not really done processing, and they take those challenges that they lost in those moments of grief into the new relationship, and then they discover they're in a relationship that's not right for them. Hopefully and happily, they've not gotten married, but in truth, if they have, they might be stuck, or they might be impregnated, or they might have a lot of different things going on in their life that they feel like, I just can't handle one more thing. But the truth is, they might not be handling things well at all. You see, in the Lord's house, which is what I talk about a lot, there are many rooms, and those many rooms allow people to be who God has called them to be. What I say by that is that we've got a lot of people out there that are preaching rhetoric. They're preaching lies from Scripture, and they're not thinking about what they're saying. I suffered through an experience this past weekend of being put literally in the wrong sort of opportunity, but with the right intentions, and I found that the man was literally lying to the people about Scripture. It was hard to sit there because I know differently from my own experiences, my own walk of faith, my own research into the Old Testament, and frankly, I was appalled. How do you tell someone, look, you're so off base here? But people are like that. They render their opinions, and that those opinions become rote in someone else's soul. The challenge is when we allow other people to put in our soul ideas, we have to always confirm those things with the God that we believe in, the faith that we have, and the Lord who governs our life. We have to look at, are we talking about the right things? Are we saying the right things? Are we doing the right things in front of God? I have an old mom who is literally struggling with something because she is not thinking about the casting off point. Now, what I mean by the casting off point is that she is older. And at some point, she's going to be called home to the Lord's house. And when you're called home to the Lord's house, I believe there's an accountability of sorts. Where the Lord says, let's take a look at your life. Or one of his dwellers in heaven does. And they literally put you through an accounting of your life. And did you raise the right sort of children? It's not really the question. It's how did you love your children? And what did you do with those children to make sure that their souls were honored always, not disregarded, not discarded, and not thrown away. You see, in life we have times to put people into a hell of sorts, and then we have times in life where we allow them to raise up, to be honored in a way that they're allowed in the Lord's house. You see, when we start to lord over people's lives, when we start to infiltrate their technology, when we start to ruin the projects that they're trying to make, when we take their property and vandalize them to the point of no longer recognizing the boxes and bins in which they were put in, we really have violated Lord God's laws. You see, it doesn't really matter if you have a person of faith in these moments of time, because I can talk about God's laws in terms of the Ten Commandments and the thou shall nots, but at the same time we have federal law that says these property items, these personhood paperworks, these documentations of legalities belong to the individual. And when a person infiltrates a secure place that is not their lawful right to be, they have violated federal law. And there's no way around that truth, that not only did they violate God's laws in doing those things, but they've also violated federal law in availing themselves to paperwork, to property, and to possessions, if you will, that don't literally belong to them. And if they destroyed those things, if they threw those things away, if they thought, I'm going to edit this person's life, they didn't have the right to do it. If they're taking those property possessions and selling them without the lawful right or consent or sign-off of the person who owns them, that is also illegal. It's theft. Plain out, straightforward, theft, burglary, if you will. When we talk about these things, we have to look at who has the ability to do such things. Who can 
get through a locked door, who can pretend that it's their right to do that? And you really have to wonder, because in my lifetime, I've never been told that I have the right to walk into someone else's home or get into their bags or open their purses to look for anything without their request of me doing so. There's a lot of people who can lie. They can write up a piece of paper. They can pretend to sign a signature. They can copy signatures off of old checks that we are told by the government we should keep for a certain period of time. I believe it's about seven years to make sure that we're protected in our taxes. But if all our tax forms have been stolen with the copies of our lawful signature, it means any person can literally start to pretend to be us, sign that signature on all sorts of forms throughout our entire life and try to desolate our lives. There are also people who go ahead of others who literally will drive ahead of someone, anticipating where they might be going or eavesdropping in through technology of where a person might be aligning themselves to go and literally go in and destroy all the opportunities for help, relationships, love, and any other opportunity that person is seeking. You see, when we do those sort of things, we're not representing anything other than our own selfish gains. We're not representing the community at all. We're not representing the politician who employed us or the employer who employed us. So many people in America forget that they are being employed, that they are literally lawfully representing a company, not their own selves. They're not valuing the company is not true. They show up for work, most of them, on time if they're a mature adult, and they continue to respect and regard their work schedule because they know they have bills to pay and they have lives to lead, which require funds. But when we have people who are out there who literally maliciously try to prevent a person from earning actually intentionally violating federal law in stalking a person, violating federal law in imparting their ideas to other people about the person's rights and morals. When we have a person literally being demonized or demonstrized or demonstrated against in some way by people who have ill-willed in receipt of information that's not their lawful right to have, we have the beginnings of a hate crime. You see, hate crimes are something that people do against all sorts of people. They do it against people of different colors and different nationalities, as we see our own president pursuing. Now, some of what he's talking about has some legitimacy, that there is a faith in this land that came to America with us. It is that of a Judeo-Christian background. So most faiths that align themselves with that sort of lineage are generally welcomed here. It is true that we have foreigners who've come to this land, but I question, why did they come here? What did they come here for? Did they come here to participate in our society and help to raise us up into better individuals and better human beings as Americans? Or did they come here to try and infiltrate our forces, meaning get into our technological realms, get into our healthcare systems, get into our food systems, and start to monkey with our rights to the safety of of our lives. You see, I believe that is what President Trump is trying to say, but he's not really articulating it all that well. As a person who has had many faith experiences from travel abroad and my own experience in looking for life after loss and exploring different aspects of the Lord's faith, I have to say that I have my own worries by what I see. When I go into an establishment that has been Philippine run for years, and then all of a sudden there's an Indian in charge, I'm like, whoa, what happened? The family is still there. Where's the owner, the master? What happened to him? When I see cars in a parking lot at McDonald's where the hourly people make a little bit better than minimum wage, and yet they're driving cars that are luxury that I can't even afford myself when I had good, viable business, I have to wonder, what happened here? You see, we have a lot of people who do come to the land illegally, and they will continue to behave illegally. And that's something that the president is trying to protect us from. I believe he's had some experience of being held hostage, and I believe he's had some experiences of losing good men who tried to protect his lives. This is no different than the military that we should all love and honor, yet someone thought that they would steal my sleeping pack and take my bequeathed hat from my father. It was a hat from Air Force that my father wore in his late years, and I got gifted by my mother of the few items that I received. Also in that hat was a dragon hat. It's from actually a baseball team, but it was something gifted from my father to my son, my Japanese son, that is. And then my Japanese son felt it would look better on my head, and he wanted to give it back over to me. And he asked me, do you think Grandpa will mind if I give this to you? And I said, I don't think so. And we asked my father, and he said, no, of course not. It's fine. He understood it wasn't the look of my son at that time in life. And my son is a very fashionable young man. I'm always impressed by young men and young women who 
put themselves together in a look that looks good not only on their body type, but also for their own personalities and their own communication styles, their own souls, if you will. I don't ever have a problem with that. You see, what I have a problem is when they don't outgrow certain things. When you don't outgrow a certain look, it's not the issue. When you're producing a look in order to produce a result, that's something else. You see, in life, we go to different types of jobs, different types of reporting, different types of conversation. And in order to do that, we have to produce a look for ourselves to know what it's really like as an experiencer of that extreme or that community. The only way to know is to actually practice that community or literally infiltrate that community. Now, what we're talking about, of course, is investigative reporting, but we're also talking about people who lie, steal, and cheat people out of their rights by pretending to be people in those communities, by pretending to care about people's health care in communities, by forgetting that the Lord made all people. Often in life, we hear of people who are twin spirits. Now, if you haven't heard of that, then you've not done any native Indian readings, or you've not done any investigations of many worlds away from here, in the south of our country, in South America, if you will, and other aspects of Africa, where native tribes have literally people who are called twin spirits. You see, it's only America that obliterates the lines. It's only America that insists there's only a binary system, and it's only America that believes that God did not make all things. In native tribes, who are most closely related to the earth and its worship, and their worship of a divine mother or heavenly father, or both deities, if you will, as it's noted in Genesis, they literally have to look at what are we learning from these people. That these people have no technology, they have no real toys that are not handmade for their children, and for the most part, those children, even living in poverty, are more content and happy because they're not materialistically driven. Now, in the position of twin spirits, they simply honor the spirit that is observed by the elders. They don't damage the individual's soul. They don't belittle that individual. They simply raise that soul as the soul is. They partner the soul with the right partner, and they go on in life with that mentality intact. It's only America that tries to destroy life, which is what literally the president has given license to the vice president, who used to be the governor of our state, and who used to run the forces here, has pretty much allowed to occur. That by de demanding that certain people be not allowed to serve our country, he's literally saying that God didn't make these people. Not according to any biblical scripture or any Dead Sea Scroll. You see, we have to decide who we're going to base our faith on. A man in power who's here for a short period of time until the next person comes in and moves on the system or whether or not we're going to base it based on the face of the world, of the globe, where there is a Lord, whether he is seen as one deity or two, or multitudes, the many faces, if you will, of Tibet. But openly, it's still about having a God that is higher than the rest of us, a holy place of heaven, nirvana, if you will, of Tengoku, if you will, in some foreign lands. But in reality, what we're looking at is, how do I get there? Do I get there by harming other people, or do I get there by loving people? Do I get there by infiltrating a person's rights to do things under federal law? You see, we have the right to make phone calls. We have the right to produce recordings. We have the right to say, speak our own minds. We have the right to practice our religion, however that faith may align ourselves in any way, shape, or form. What we don't have the right to do is take our religion and utilize it to harm someone else. That's very clear underneath international human rights law. And openly we have a nation and a society in America that is totally forgetting why the country was built in the first place. We also have people around the globe that don't acknowledge the treaties of the world that the nation's leaders have put in place to regard both men and women as holy, as valuable to the world, and as unique individuals in the life force of God in heaven, or wherever you feel God resides. In this time of change, climate change for a lot of reasons, as well as the impact of global warming on our society, it's here in April in Indiana, it should be warm and beautiful, but it was literally frigid in the middle of the night last night. I literally had to go into a shop that was open, thankfully, 
one of the few, in the middle of the night, multiple times because I couldn't feel my feet anymore. My hands weren't surviving, but they're starting to blacken from those sorts of things. But my toes, I just couldn't even move. And I could barely walk because of that. You see, our shoes are not made well by foreign clients, it's true. Our socks are literally not warm enough for the client climates, and we don't have enough scientific study in this, I would regard, because human beings are such unique individuals that our cellular health predict whether or not we're going to be cold or not. Our extremities, if you will, are the things that get the coldest, that get lost in moments of frostbite, and openly we have to know how to help people in the middle of the night to not harm them. Now, I had a young man tell me that I could stay if I purchased something, so I was able to afford a cup of ramen. But openly, it was twice the price that it would have been other, other places, but again, they don't stock as much, and that's okay. I didn't mind paying it. The reason I didn't mind paying it was because the young man was so professional, so kind, so thoughtful. He openly allowed me to sit for a while. He understood my situation. I shared a little of my story. We talked. I got to know him a little bit, and he was such an improvement over the gal who had been there before, who literally couldn't conceptualize the freezingness of the winter months. That she thought an old man should walk from one place to another was sort of outlandish, but the fact that she couldn't tolerate the person standing inside where it was warm is a real deficit of society. We've got a problem right now in which we've got a leader who is promoting hatred, and that has to change. Regardless of whether he stays in office or whether he flees or goes, it doesn't really matter, and I don't say that in jest. What I mean is that we cannot afford to be a nation of haters. We cannot be afford to be a nation of people who think they're above Lord God in any way, shape, or form, because what we learn in every situation, in every moment of combat, is that we are not in control. We can make a good strategic plan, but the Lord can change the plan in an instant. He can send in his own forces to help us, or we can, he can send in his own forces to defeat us. And openly, those who lie, steal, and cheat other people out of their rights and out of their lives, usually get ill. And if you've gotten ill severely and you're not sure why, you might have to look at your life a little bit and go, what did I do to someone? What did I do that was a violation of human rights in front of the house of God? You see, I've had enough magic of the Lord to know that there is a God, that there absolutely is an angelic force, if you will, the Holy Spirit as it's talked about in many world's religions, and I have no qualms in talking about it because that is my faith and it is my right underneath the First Amendment. When I talk like this, my marketing folks might go, he's crazy, or the pastor that I once served in marketing might go, hey, I like what he's doing. It's really about opinion these days. If you don't like what I'm talking about, don't listen. If you feel like it's new and different, then listen. If you like what I'm doing, push the like button on whatever medium you see this, on whatever format, you might see it in social media. But when people violate our rights and delete our work, when they get onto our computer files, when they get into our YouTube, when they edit our YouTube channels, when they take our videos and edit our intellectual property, they are violating federal law. There is nothing in any law elsewhere that gives them the right to do that. No other law allows you to lord over any other human being. And that is very clearly stated in the human rights charters and world treaties that our presidents of old and other national leaders of other world places have decided is human rights. You see, in life, we have moments of time to prove that we are a person of the world, or we have moments of time to prove that we are a small-minded country bumpkin that doesn't know the law. In life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone. That moment is now for someone important in my life. That moment might be tomorrow for someone important in your life. You have to be prepared. You have to be ready to love on people. You have to be willing to raise people up. And if you're not, then maybe you're not American enough to be here. I sort of think that's the message that the man in charge right now is trying to say, even though he's guttural, even though he's foul-mouthed at times, even though he might embarrass many people in religious faith with his swearing, but he's real. He's authentic. And that's what we need in the presidency. That's what I like about a lot of the Democratic candidates coming forward, is that you can see their authenticity, you can see the passion in their fields, you can see the proof of their work, especially in some of the women coming forward, and some of the young men. We've got two contenders coming through who are really sort of quite personal and well articulated. We don't need another bumpkin for a president. We need a military strategic mind who knows how to utilize people in a way that makes them a resource and an asset. We need a marksman of sorts because he's got to protect his own life when 
his own Secret Service fails, but at the same time, he has to be willing to protect the lives of other human beings. You see, other human beings have not given their rights over to him to say, go ahead, tell me how I can live my life. Go ahead, tell me what I can do with my body. Go ahead, tell me what food I can take in. Go ahead, tell me. Nobody says that. Not one human being in America has ever said that, and I'm pretty sure people in the rest of the world don't say it either. You see, the Lord God makes us to allow us the right to choose either godly things or ungodly things. Godly things love on other people. Ungodly things destroy their lives. This is all I've got to say today. I hope you've had an interesting time listening. I hope you've put a few thoughts in your mind. And if you find this authentic audio cast valuable in any way, shape, or form just to make your mind think, I'd appreciate a shout out. Thanks for listening.